Are guys like yourself, are you actually investing with Cardone? Where are you looking to invest? Yeah, no, I'll tell you exactly. Distraction determines your direction. Direction determines your destiny. So if you know that achieving the goal gives you the rush, gives you the excitement. If you had your 60-year-old self and he was walking up to you and saw you right now, what would he say? What are you getting after? What seeds are you planting? What are you overcoming? Think big. Think even bigger. Take some risks. God's got your back. Go for it. Don't hold back. Don't ever have regrets in your life. Go fail. Go grow from those things. Live your life. Your identity is not defined by your successes or your failures. If you're not happy where you're at, you won't be happy where you're going. Choose to do the things that will make you the person you want to be, that will make you a better person next week and next year. You're going to have to leave some things you're actually good at behind so that you can find what you're wired for, what you're born for. Being a world-class entrepreneur is being in every area of life excellent. It is the little things that are so easy not to do. The best thing that you can do is assume the best in people. I want people around the world to believe they can do something great with their life. If I build the biggest business, but I destroy my physical body and I lose my health, I don't think that's success. While you're on the journey climbing to success, never forget the things that matter most. Hi, everybody. I'm Dr. Chris Zeno, and you're listening to the Heart Healthy Hustle Show with Jonathan Frederick, a real great friend of mine. And in this episode, you will learn how to... Today's date, February 3rd, 2020. February 3rd, 2020. So it's already February. January is over. There has been one month come and gone already in 2020. That means there's only 11 more months left. That's okay. That's okay. <sighs> Let's just take a deep breath. You will be able to be as productive as you're hoping you can be. Keep in mind as well, the season between February, March through October is really where a lot of the mass production comes into play. January is already over. I hope you're having a killer start to your 2020. People are reaping what they've been sowing for many, many months and years. If you're in that boat, congratulations. I'm very excited for you and for your progress. I can relish and help you celebrate some of those wins. I want to jump into today's episode, but before we do that, I want to touch base, give you a brief update on what's been going on in the show. And I've been having multiple interactions with friends and listeners and people who are um, noticing that the publishing has been a little spotty over the last month and a half. I want to share that I'm going to be moving to a bi-weekly publishing schedule. What that means is that every other week I will be publishing uh, an interview versus every single week. The reason for this is largely due to feedback from you, the listener. Many of you, will, when I ask for feedback, will mention how you're backlogged, you're backlogged about you know, two to five episodes, and you can't wait to catch up on them, but it's really just there's so many episodes when you consistently publish one per week that it becomes kind of just like this swamp of episodes and great content, not sure where to pick up where you left off. To help in that effort and to really kind of alleviate some of the burden that it has been to really produce this show in full, healthy, high-quality capacity, I'm going to move into a bi-weekly publishing schedule. I know I have shared with you in the past that I'm wanting to share my journey transparently so that you can know where I'm at and how my journey is coming along because that's half the fun for keeping up with brands, keeping up with something that is really started out of nothing. And if you're not interested in listening to this update, you can skip ahead to like the five minute mark or whatever. No problem at all. No, no hard feelings. But I did want to be fair with those of you who are uh, personal connections, friends and listeners who have reached out to the show, whether that's because you have interest in starting a podcast, expanding into online entrepreneurship or just entrepreneurship in general. What's been going on with me? I picked up a full time job in in the beginning of the year in 2019. So I picked up a job. The reason was January 2019. I met with my financial mentor, who shared with me that if I have any debt, that I need to become financially debt-free to have a healthy foundation for entrepreneurship, for building my own thing. So he said, the best thing you can do right now, Jonathan, is go to work full-time, if not more than full-time, kick butt, like just work and pay down and off all of your debt. So that way you can decide from a free place when you're in, in what ways you're going to build your business and you will have a healthy foundation. And it was such a good point. One, the first thing that stuck out to me the most was 
it is so much better to build a business from a foundation of being debt free. Of course, right? It almost seems a no brainer. And the second was you can work full time and take a position in entrepreneurship. Now, long term in my life, do I see myself working full time and working in an entrepreneurial capacity? Maybe not. Maybe so. Who knows? I've actually come to enjoy working full time. I never thought I would say that, but hey, I actually really do enjoy it. It's, it's, it's something with the consistency. And I will admit this, coming up to the point in time last year when I was applying for work in a full-time role to increase my income in a consistent manner, not only was I very scared, and I genuinely believed that I would probably do better right now at this season in my life working full-time than trying to do it all myself. Some people have that edge, have that tenacity. They're treating themselves like a professional. And if you haven't listened to the episode with Joe Duncan, the founder of Before 5 AM on Instagram, and he's got over millions of followers because of the effectiveness of his brand and how helpful it is, check that interview out. It's a few, I think it's over 20 episodes back, so you have to scroll. Again, I didn't want to ramble here in the beginning. Uh, I want to get right into this episode in just a moment here. I want to also provide you guys with a bit of an update. 2019 was an, a huge year for me in, a, in the growth department, and it went very fast. I didn't even hardly have the time to sit down and reflect on it. By going back to work full time, that was a huge step in growth for me. I learned how to be consistent on a job. I learned how to talk more about business and talk with C-suite executives and controllers. I learned how to be a contributing part of a healthy workplace culture and team. I'm learning about tech. I'm learning about online sales. I'm learning about tax and I'm learning about financial terms and financial literacy and all these things that I've been wanting and knowing that I need to learn about for years that I just didn't really have the time or the initiative to do it. But now that I have been doing it, 2019 <clears throat> has been an amazing year of growth for myself. I'm excited. I'm in the stage of looking for a house closer to where I work that I plan to rent up to four rooms out of while simultaneously living there. Um, this is a great way to uh, leverage your cost of living because that's usually the largest expense many of us have. One, I enjoy having roommates. Two, having my housing costs paid for is a huge benefit to me. And three, being closer to where my full-time work is is incredibly beneficial for not only cutting out any commute time, but also allowing me to sleep more, feel less rushed, and just be in a healthier state of mind. Very excited about doing some of you who are recommending we take the show onto YouTube. Really comes down to, I want to have a studio. So I have been making excuses. I want to make sure I get into this house as soon as possible so that I can build out a place that's a consistent set spot where I know if I just sit down, I just hit the record button, I can start creating amazing video content for YouTube. Very excited. I know 2020 is going to be a huge year for you, and I'm excited to see your goals come to fruition and even just working progress towards your goals. I would encourage you, if you haven't already, go into your quiet place, wherever that is. Maybe there's a favorite chair you have. Maybe get up early tomorrow morning, like 5 a.m., if that's enough time for you. Spend an hour really thinking about where and what you want your life to look like in five years from now and in 10 years from now. Start with five because five goes fast. Think back on the last five that you just lived. It goes very fast. I can encourage you though and say a lot can happen and does happen in even just one year's time. In two years time, tons can happen. In three years time, your life can be completely different. So five years, you can really achieve and get to a certain point in life that you never perhaps even perceived as possible. You have to have faith. I have faith that God has the best plan worked out already for me, and I'm just kind of trusting the process and taking action and, and executing with full faith that things will work out to the best that they're supposed to. And when you genuinely operate from that place, your state of mind, it's, it's powerful, and you help other people along the way to see that way as well. And I hope, to, I hope to encourage you that it is possible and that in five years from now, whatever you want, what you, do you want your life to look like? Please write it down, write it out. There is a chemical reaction that happens when you write out what you actually desire and you look at the words you're writing. 
I was doing this last week and my hands were sweating. My heart, I wouldn't say my heart was pounding, but there is something different even than typing it out. Typing it out is great, but even writing it down um, is even more powerful. So I would invite you to do that. And what you may find is in three to four years from now, a lot of that stuff has has has, has happened. So, um, you know, it, it really is powerful to approach life with intention. You want to live your life with intention. I think John Maxwell, one of my favorite points he always stresses is this live life intentionally live life intentionally you don't want life to happen to you you want to happen to your life I I, again I didn't want to go on a rant but it is still the beginning of the year productivity is ramping up hopefully your January was phenomenal it was great for this show we've had some amazing interviews amazing guests and we're going to be bringing on some second rounder some of the guests that you guys loved the most I'm bringing you back on to the show And they're more than happy to oblige and come back on the show and talk with you guys. And uh, I'm excited. Without more monologuing, let's jump right into today's interview with Dr. Chris Zeno. Hello and welcome back to another inspiring episode of the Heart Healthy Hustle Show. We're joined today for a third time with our friend, Dr. Chris Zeno. Chris, say what's up to the audience. Yes, thank you so much for having me on this third time together. I love being a repeat guest, and thank you for everybody who uh, really appreciates what we bring to the table. And I know we'll give you even more value today than we did the last two times. And I think of a friend in particular, Dan. Shout out to you, Dan. I know you always enjoy hearing from Dr. Zeno. Just give you guys a catch up on who is Dr. Chris Zeno if you're newer to the show. He is a world renowned speaker, author, entrepreneur and health advocate at Abundant Life Chiropractic. He's also well-known for his competitive bodybuilding achievements. He earned himself a title of Mr. America in 98 and won his IFBB professional status at the 2016 Team Universe at the age of 40. Not only that, he also overcame a deadly disease through the principles of function, food, and fitness. It's always good to hear about health and wellness and just life in general talking with Chris. So, Chris, Go ahead and share with us a favorite success quote that is driving you on the day to day. No one's coming, you know, and that's uh, that was actually from Nathaniel Brandon, and he was a very good therapist. A lot of times, when his patients used to come see them, they were in such a scarcity mode, a victim mode, the world is against them mode. That became a habit. So he used to tell them, "No one, no one is coming. No one's coming. Like Mm. no one's coming to save you." And it forced them to just like wake up and say, "Like, listen, no one's coming." That means they had to become resourceful, take back their authority and live life on their terms once again. And they would say, well, hey, you know, you're here. You're here for me. He's like, yeah, I'm here to tell you no one's coming. And it was just, I love it. And that's, you know, just think of those days when we get out of bed and where we're trying to do something and we're tired, it's hard, or we just don't want to do it. And that simple word, listen, you know, no one's coming. You know, sometimes that I don't want to tell you a fancy quote that makes you feel good. Sometimes it's the quote that gets you off your ass that makes the difference. Simple and profound. No one's coming. In the green room before the show, we were chatting. You welcomed me to share op- openly what I'm going through and how that always translates to a lot of the listeners in the audience. So we'll definitely do that. I want to ask you, give us some updates since we last spoke together, I believe was in the fall of 2018. As an entrepreneur, Abundant Life Chiropractic is still going. Give us a brief update in the day-to-day for Chris Zeno. Oh yeah, man. Speaking has been great. You know, going all over the world for that for the I Am Hero Project, uh, the Cairo Clinic still doing amazing, and uh, we uh, just opened up a regenerative medicine stem cell clinic that's just taken off like nothing else. So, you know, we got three businesses, and I got consulting and private coaching as well. So it really, uh, probably five, six multiple sources of income going on uh, of businesses that are giving a lot of value, and and yeah, everything's great, man. Everything is great. I wouldn't trade for anything. I want to jump into that right away with, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that called with the stem cell uh, regenerative, regenerative, regenerative practice? Is that is that called bio life science? What is that called? No, no. Renew, well, mine's called Renew Life Rejuvenation. And we deal with umbilical cord allografts. You know, we worked with Dr. Neil Rudin. Like, have you ever heard of like, like Mel Gibson and all these people go, used to go to yeah. Panama? Yeah. 
But mm-hmm. he, he was actually uh, Dr. Reardon. He was on the Joe Rogan show because of Mel Gibson and all these guys. So he actually- How do you spell that if someone wants to check? Just look up uh, Stem Cell Joe Rogan. <laughs> and all right. Yeah, that'll you'll, definitely you'll do pull it up. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so he has a. He used to be in- He was still in Panama, but they have a lab now in Dallas, Texas. And we're able to get those those specific cells and allografts that he uses. So exclusive rights to that here in the Houston area. And yeah, man, like, you know, and that's what I do. Like, and that's, that's a great segue because- for instance, there and no one, you guys listening, you don't have to know anything about stem cells or allografts. But you know, when you do something, it's you go like whatever it is you're thinking of doing. You ask yourself, okay, who's the most known? Who's doing the best? Who gets the best results? So when I was searching actually for my mom because her knees, uh, she had bad knees, and she went to a seminar and got some stem cells, and it just it was a horrible experience. So as I researched that, I realized that wow, there's many ways of harvesting stem cells. There's different qualities of stem cells. You really like you keep on going down the rabbit hole, just saying, "Wow, this is just not a simple thing." You throw money at it, and, and you just get this injection. Like, there's a lot of details. And the, when I went through that search, and that's when I saw the Joe Rogan episode with Mel Gibson and Dr. Reardon, and and then researched Panama and saw Anthony Robbins and Mel Gibson. All these stars would go down there, and amazing videos, amazing results. I, and I wasn't thinking about at it for like everybody else. I was thinking about it for my mom, right? And so when you go into that, that, that experience where you just want the best because you want to help someone that you care deeply about, then you just, money's not the issue here. It's like, who's the best? Who's, the, who's this? Who's that? It's, there's no business model there. Through all the research and everything, it kept on leading back to him, kind of like as the, the, hedge, uh, the hedge of this all and, and really with the most research. So I decided to team up with him and another company that's in the States that have a really good working relationship with him to kind of uh, start that way. And you and the thing is, you go in knowing you have a great product backed up by a great person who dedicated their life to it. And there's other products out there that, just like anything else, you know, they're in there for the quick money. They're cheaper quality. They they try to you know do the uh, the price war, say we could do what they do but cheaper, you know. And there's a lot of that around. I don't actually, and I'm sure a lot of the listeners don't actually know what that is. So basically, you take stem cells from umbilical cords and then use them use them in a lab to to grow tissue in a lab is that accurate well actually real close so uh, from the uh the umbilical cord tissue they call it the wharton's jelly of that tissue you have these mesenchymal stem cells and these are the type of stem cells that regenerate cartilage muscle tissue uh nerve regenerate nerves and capillaries and blood flow so you will actually place that tissue into the joint, mainly the joints. I just do it orthopedically, shoulders, elbows, wrists, neuropathy, knees, hips, ankles, SI joints. And from there, these mesenchymal stem cells are why a six-year-old or a five-year-old, they could run around, scrape their knee, and in a couple of days, it's done. You know, scab, a new tissue there. Whereas people get older, we actually, as we age, our strength and, and fitness of those these mesenchymal stem cells go down. So instead of harvesting it, harvesting it from your own body, which people do, they take it from your bone marrow or fat. We don't want to take it from old, unfit people. Who, I mean, that's the reason why you're, on, you're, you're in your position in the first place. We put those day zero uh, umbilical cord tissue, umbilical st- uh, you know, stem cells in there, or, or allografts, because they have more than stem cells in them. And the regeneration of, of joint tissue is incredible. It's amazing. Like I did my right shoulder and I did my, uh, my SI joints from adjusting all those years. And it's just, uh, it's been incredible in a very short amount wow. of time. It, so it really works. Do you have to match up your genetics or your no. uh, blood type or anything? Great, great question. Now, uh, some companies use umbilical cord blood. And yes, people have, my mom had that. They had, she had a reaction because your body either could transmit disease and or have a reaction to it, right? Some type of even low level autoimmune response. But with the, the mesenchymal cord, the tissue of that umbilical cord, it's zero, zero biological markers for mom or baby. So it, there's no reaction whatsoever. Over 51,000 procedures done uh, with our companies, zero, zero uh, reactions because there is no, it's immunogenic. There's no immune response for it. This is an up and coming thing, isn't it? It's been around for quite some time, yeah. but it's now really kind of hitting the mainstream almost. Yeah, yeah. It's been around for 25 years. What you're starting to see is now you see everybody seeing the potential. They see it's working and now everybody's hopping on board. So now you get excited and everybody's like, wow, you know, there's, 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 yes, you could help a lot of people, but helping a lot of people means you can make a crap load of money, okay, with this as well. So now you have the mixture of a bunch of, 
a bunch of people are just in it for the money versus actually doing it to help people. And that really happens in any any industry, right? Whether it's fitness, food, whatever it is, supplements, vitamins, you name it, you're always going to have that because they're chasing the green. And usually those people or those companies will oversaturate the market and actually cause the FDA or someone to wind up shutting it down eventually, right? You know, just that's, you know, like Gary Vaynerchuk says, you know, people, <laughs> human beings ruin things, you know, you have good marketing and then you have a bunch of people saturate and ruin it. So that's why whatever you're doing, if you guys are listening, if you're an entrepreneur, let's say you're an entrepreneur, cause this, that's what I do. Or let's say it's any job. Let's say you work in a, in a company that sells uh, shoes. doesn't matter what it is. The most let's do software. Yeah. Software, right? The most important thing you could do is you must you must always talk about your differences and your uniqueness. What makes you unique? What makes you different? Because let me tell you, I speak to people, they've been to plenty of free dinners and free lunches and seminars and heard this. So when I'm up there, it's like, how am I different? How are we different? How are we unique? In order to make a person feel comfortable making a purchase or an exchange of money of value for your service, they need to have confidence in you confidence in your product and confidence in the company behind it. So that's why your uniqueness, what is different? What is unique, different about you? And if you always, 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 I I always ride the uniqueness point and what makes us different. That's great. I want to jump into the specialization pre-diversification. So everyone who's listening, a lot of us have heard the phrase, you know, you want to build up to, you know, around a few sources of income, Hopefully, some of those are more or less passive or managed by other outsourced delegation. If one goes bad or is having a slow season or month, the other businesses carry you with a consistent cash flow. With with specializing before diversifying, is that what you did with chiropractic? Because I've noticed something that's happening that almost I fell into. Thankfully, I heard a speech, a video from Patrick, but David you know, you want to specialize before you diversify, you know, seven sources of income is great, but specialization is important because otherwise you'll never become the best in one space. So I'm curious to know, Chris, how did you go about that building those multiple streams? No, I, I absolutely agree with that, what he said, and also kind of, it's kind of what Starbucks did, right? So Starbucks became really good at making, everybody went there for coffee and they're like, well, hey, then then what they did is they started selling everything that was along the chain of that. And Apple does the same thing. Oh, you like our coffee? Well, yes. Well, you could buy our coffee to go to take it at home and like the grounds. Or here's a mug to put your coffee in. We sell the beans. You know, almost point like every point of coffee, the beans themselves, the machines to to the to to the which you which you hold hold it in. Here's a thermos to take it with you. So they really the whole chain effect. Same with Apple, you know. Here's your computer, here's your iPhone, here's your iPad, here's the buds for it. So almost every part of it. Now they have the card, right? So they really infiltrate your life. So for me, I had a wellness company, chiropractic portion. So I'm helping people with their health. And then this is a great additive because now it's like I could help people more on the orthopedic side because I always want to see people avoid drugs and surgery. So you know what I mean? It's kind of in the same... It's in the same, it's like a cousin. It's it's a philosophy of the body healing itself or using tools for the body to heal itself. I could add nutrition, right? That would be a third aspect of it. I could add in um, a lifetime, right? Because here's the thing, what can we do to have an ongoing recurring revenue? So lifetime patients, almost like a membership. So any type of membership you guys could do. And then because of chiropractic, I, you know, I, 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 just take that model. And now I coach other chiropractors to do the same models, right? So now you could build consulting and you could have evergreen stuff now where everything's on a program. So that's a membership. I try to do everything on a membership as, as much as possible. And then you could take the earnings from there and you could put it into like, a, a, you know, a Cardone uh, capital where it's going there and you're making 6% off your money in real estate. And you could just start you know, you just start running around, but you will, one thing for certain is some of those streams will be small, like affiliates, you know, let's say you ran a couple affiliates, right? Some of those income streams will be smaller and bigger, but Mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it all goes into your bank account, right? So it's just, it's just at the end of the day, but you will have to watch out for, are you spending, you know, you got to watch out. Am I spending a lot of money uh, building my Amazon store and where that, at, but I could, if I spent that money and energy in something else that would have a greater return with me, like my, see, my brick and mortar is always the best. So I would take mm-hmm. brick and mortar over any type of internet thing right now because it happens to be the, the main engines of, of my life and income and, and security. For me, it would make more sense to put in the brick and mortar versus 
doing podcast or something like that. Not saying there's anything wrong with what you're doing, just like my time, because it takes a lot of it takes a lot of work what you're doing. And in the time that of, of what you're doing to put together what you're putting together, I could actually be doing that in my brick and mortar and actually creating uh, more of a you know more of an income stream there. So you know you just got to prioritize that and you're right. What could be delegated out, you do that immediately. And then two, there's things that are not replaceable. Like you're not replaceable. So how do we how do we train or reproduce what you do? Because one thing we always want to do is we want to be unreplaceable. When you're unreplaceable, that means that you'll never lose your job, right? So so you want to be very hard to replace, but you want your system at least to be duplicatable. And once you could duplicate your system, let's say you teach people how to do like this. Like if I want to start a, a podcast like you're doing, I don't know anything about the squad cast. And see, so you don't realize like because you're you're so far ahead, you could really help a lot of people get started very quickly, very efficiently, and lose and save money and time. And that's valuable. So, you know, you you could what can you reproduce and what can you replicate? And then that's something you could package package together as well. Right. That's, that's, that's important to remember. And actually we do offer that. Yeah. I do offer that consulting. Keep it in mind for any listeners. One of the things I want to jump into, are you, you're very good at building rapport with perceived audience demographics and things like that. You mentioned Belfort, Cardone, all these guys in the social media who are masters of marketing, et cetera. Jordan Belfort's the Wolf of Wall Street for anyone who doesn't yeah. know. Curious to know though, are guys like yourself who are real players making real money in the real world, are you actually investing with Cardone? I'm curious to know, like, where are you looking to invest because it can help other people? Yeah, no, I'll tell you exactly. Okay. No, I'm, I'm always yeah, transparent. I, um, I invest in some things that got my ass kicked, right? Just like everybody might. You know? so, what? What's what's one thing that didn't? Oh, work? like you know, there was a video game website, you know, <laughs> and that 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 was one hundred forty thousand out the door. Uh, there was a day trader guy that was two hundred thousand uh, dollars out the thing because I didn't know. I didn't do my research. It was like. When you have money coming in, you're like, oh, everything sounds great. And a couple other, you know, because I didn't have control over it. Or I didn't uh. know the person long enough, right? Or I didn't really do my research. So now, uh, the one thing with grant stuff, I was like, wow, that so much makes sense. To the point where it made so much sense that I sold my house and I'm renting a townhouse. Because his theory is, hey, man, don't buy a house. Don't have your money tied up. Rent where you live and then buy buy what you could rent, right? So so it made sense. And I didn't want to go around because I didn't have time to go around and find out good deals of apartment units. And I okay. normally, I, I wouldn't be able to buy beautiful, huge complexes. So it just made sense, Cardone Capital. So what I do is, and I'll tell you how I do it. Then a friend of mine who I know, who I met in Park City, Utah, I know that I know that I know he does. He really has over the last 10 years have, has crushed it on day trading. And I know that I know that I know he does well because I've seen the fruits of his labor, which is very important, guys. Like, you know, there's there's some people they might take a picture next to a fancy car and stuff like this. But when you know this guy, he's kind of like a secret. He doesn't really talk to a lot of people. Yep, I know, yep. I know him, I know him pretty Elusive. well. I yep. lose, yes. And you know what? And I just see the fruits of the labor. It's almost like he doesn't need to talk to anybody. And I'm like, okay, great. And that's kind of like, that's what I call relationship capital. So he Let me should, pause this real quick. Yeah. That's so powerful because there's so many powerful players out there who are not, it's funny because it's like, I feel like real winners have zero desire or need to flex. Like they don't want people to know. And that seems to be a key trait of truly successful people. That's my perception. Well, no, I think you're correct. You know why? Because he's like, well, why would I want to do consulting and coaching and all this other stuff when I could just sit here in my in, in my office for four hours a day and make twenty two percent of my money or make five hundred thousand a month, right? So it's like, great, all right. So, uh, hey, can I hand you some? It's like, sure. And then uh, then you, there's something called Allianz, which is it's like an annuity where it uh, no matter how if the stock market goes down, it, it'll you'll never go lower than what you're making. So that means how do you so, spell that? Allianz, A L L I A N Z. Allianz, A L L I A N Z. It's that company's been around forever, and it's it's insured, right? So if the stock market takes a, it's the bed, so to speak. Then you're you're not going to lose any money. You might not make a lot, but you won't lose it, right? So at least it's something that's safe. And I could take out to I could take out ten percent a year if need be. So it's not all liquid, but at, at all, but at least I could take out if I need it. So this is my theory. So I have those three things, and then I have my businesses. First of all, nothing will ever give an ROI better than my chiro clinic, stem cell clinic, and even consulting stuff. So those things, the ROI is incredible, right? So 
but you know, I put stuff into them. But when I have the extra, I try to I try to save up a hundred thousand, and for every hundred thousand, then I swipe it out. So I save up a hundred, and then I'll put the that one. I'll put a hundred a grant. I save up a hundred. I'll put a hundred of my buddy. I save up a hundred. I put it in Allianz. So I just keep rotating that, and I just put my head down and just keep on keep on doing it. So that's my thing. Say, so, and you could be whatever. You save up ten, you throw it here. You save up ten, but I have my buckets. I put it in. But nothing, nothing will beat and get the return uh, that that would ever I would ever get on my my just from my businesses and yeah. but yeah, but I still do it anyway. You're like, well, why don't you put that hundred thousand back into your business? Because I mean, I, I don't need a hundred thousand dollars to put in marketing for my business. You know, if I do, it's great and it could I could you know it's it's awesome, but it's not necessary. I'd rather just because what I'm trying to do the the outcome is what we want to do is this. We want to be able to invest in these places that you will do your research and you will find out about and you will do your own thing. And you know, maybe by your time you're 40, you'll know someone for 15 years going, okay, this person's a legit person. Then you know, hey, listen, and you know, here's this money I'm putting here. And let's say at a million dollars, you get six percent, that's sixty grand a year you get passively. Let's say at a two million dollars, it's hundred and twenty thousand dollars a year you get passively. And it's like now now you're having financial confidence. See, we don't want to have financial uh, security. Yeah. We want to have financial confidence because you always want to keep on doing things. But man, wouldn't that be nice to have a hundred and twenty thousand dollars coming a year just from uh, the money that you earned, you know, and then not touching any of the principles. So the goal is you want to think out what can I invest? And so due to the, the whole thing is about the, the passive income coming in. That's where you buy the toys from. So if you want your Lamborghini, you want that cool watch, these guys get it because of their passive income is paying for that, not their, not their core earned strategy. So right. that, that's what it is. So like if you owned a bunch of apartment buildings and you made 10 grand a month passively, that's that's what you buy your if you want to buy fun stuff from you know or you just reinvest it so but I think what you know you you want to look at something where in the future my thing is like if I could put this much away and then live off two hundred grand let's say a year passively it'd be freaking amazing it'd be awesome you know so you just kind of think like that but you got to start doing it now you got to start doing it now so you don't you don't buy the house why because all the money goes to the house becomes a huge liability rent guys rent i mean you could get a really i got a really beautiful town home and if anything goes wrong i get to call the landlord and be like hey the ac broke this and that and uh, you you're done right like so all that money you leave cash flow in your life and but the most important thing is uh, whatever company or business you do nothing beats that number 2 if you do find areas um, you got to know the person you got you got to know them very very well or follow them a long, long, long time. So we'll use Grant. When you follow someone for three, four, five, six, seven years, and you see how they're juggernauting, and you kind of know the background, and you know people who work with them, they're like, okay, it's still a risk, but it's like, hey, you know, that's the thing. You want to find the least amount of risk possible, and that's why I chose those those three that are outside my my own companies. Yeah, it makes sense. It makes total sense. One thing I disagree with, which is the house thing. And the reason I say that is because what I'm planning to do is buy, rent it, and then profit from the rent. It's not yeah. for everyone. But for me, if my rent in the area that I'm living in, which is you know metropolitan area, the rent for a decent spot is equal to the mortgage and all expenses included for a nice three two that I could fill with people and profit from. We were but, on the same we were on the same we no, I was saying the same thing. It's like you rent you you rent where you live, meaning like if I live here. I'm like right. in the place I live, yeah. right? But if I wanted to then, if I wanted to buy this and then go somewhere else and rent it out, then that's something that's a cash flow, right? So well, I'm like, looking at doing a, a, a live in because I'm like just single. Airbnb? I don't have, I'm not a family. No, not Airbnb, but actual live in with roommates. Oh, nice. So I'll dude. have, that's great. if you're comfortable, because my comfortability is very much willing to live in a truck on the driveway to fill in all rooms and have full capacity. Like that's where I'm at mentally. So I'm, you know, it's funny, but it's exciting because that's going to be 2020 for me. That's, that's really cool insight. I love to hear what people like yourself are doing and how you're investing and learning from you. And also a lot of the people listening are pretty well attuned to um, what true winners are doing and what they look like. So I definitely agree with that. Well, let's talk about sure. that. Let's talk about that as well. Like, no, no, I'm I'm really a big believer. If it's something you really, really want, that's still somewhat irrational. It's like you could also somewhat sacrifice other things that aren't really like, for instance, value. If you value something high, you'll pay for that. 
where there's some other things that you really don't care about. Let's say, let's say you don't care about a forty or fifty thousand dollar watch. I don't, you know, but you and I might put it in a nicer computer system or a nicer car, right? You know, so it's like, but we will actually use that into something, or maybe you'll shop at Whole Foods and spend. 400 bucks a month on food, right? You know what I mean? Like it's, you're going to put yeah. the money into what you value, but there's other things like, there's other things that aren't, aren't like you don't need uh, the expensive toilet paper, right? You don't need, like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not saying you're no, cheap no. on other areas. I'm, this is not scarcity thinking at all. It's like- It's the opposite. It's like right. freeing up abundance in areas that matter most to you. Yes. Yes, man. You nailed it. So it's like, no, get what, you know, get that thing or go to that event if it's going to be a, a wonderful experience. And then, but you, because you know what, you're not going out and drinking uh, four nights a month. You know what I mean? Like, like you're like, well, I'm trading in something that's that's sabotaging my future, and I'm I'm using that towards something uh, or an experience that will uh, build yeah. build something in my life. Yeah, that's powerful. And community is very powerful. And it's something that it's hard for you know go getters, entrepreneurial people to to really find true community is difficult. It doesn't have to be because it's out there, but it is a challenge. One of the things I have noticed and will say to what you just said about, you, you know, you're not going out, you're not drinking, you know, five nights a week. I mean, just for the person listening who may be feeling like, oh, well, what am I missing out? Like, you're not missing out on anything at all. There's nothing appealing about it um, at all. And I'm not judging you. If that's your life, I'm, who am I to judge your lifestyle? I'm honest about that. But it, at the end of the day, you're not missing out on anything. You're just way ahead of the curve. So keep at it and stay strong. Yeah, it's drama, dude. Yep. It's it's a hundred percent drama. Like it's, it's exciting. Mm. All the excitement and drama is excitement. It's like it's distraction, plain and simple. I mean, yeah. you don't you don't need to meet someone. Like for instance, like the person I want to meet isn't in a bar on a Saturday night. It's like why yeah. would I go to yeah. a bar? Like I know all that is distracting for my purpose or what I want to do. But again, like I'm you know you know what I mean. But if 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 someone's in the point of their life, they're like, listen, I got a good job, I got security. And they need excitement, then they kind of go to those areas to get drama and excitement because it's exciting, right? It's it's uh, it's the new flavor of the week, but it de- it definitely does right. catch up. It, but, it will catch up. Yeah, it catch it's not up. without consequence. It's going to come with what it comes with, and that's that's right. It's a lot. Dude, of I love drama. that. I love that. Yeah. That was my favorite part of John Wick Three. If you guys watched that movie, now, insane. The whole the, the theme behind it was just when you say consequences. Every choice you make. Has a consequence, good or bad, like good or bad, like you're there's a consequence for every choice you make. Understand that. Consequences aren't always bad at all, or or but there is one. And now that's what I love that movie. You know, they're like consequences, they're like consequences. There's always a consequence. I, but you know what? You and I, I I'm not gonna you're right, we're not coming from judgment. We're just coming from, you know, like a couple times you're like, wow, I, I'm missing out. You're just gonna find out you're having opportunity cost. And I think opportunity cost is is uh, you know one hour of work a day? If you could wake up one hour earlier, that's equivalent to like a few forty-hour weeks at the end of the year. It's insane. So it's like, just think of the opportunity costs that you're missing out on mm, uh, yeah. of doing something that's. And you know that one hour could be reading. That could be one hour of personal development in the morning. That imagine if you did nine forty-hour weeks of, of first. Pers- it's like studying a course that can make you better or have awareness to become a better person or develop a better skill. It's those little things that matter. It's 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 a yeah. compound effect, you know. One of the key words you used was distraction. And I was reading a book called The Principle of the Path. One of my favorite lines in there was distraction determines your direction. And that's why it's so powerful. Direction determines your destiny. So distraction determines your direction. And that's why distraction can be so sinister because there's distractions everywhere. And we all hear about that, but the reason it's so powerful is because what distracts you, even on a small scale, is going to determine your direction, which even one or two to three degrees over compounded years, over years, over time, the compound effect of that, you're going to land on the other side of the world versus if you were not being distracted by the wrong thing. You know what I mean? So to me, that was mind blowing. To a million percent. So I want to acknowledge you for something. When we had last spoke, you mentioned, I, I was asking you about did you have to learn to win at things in your life, momentum, this, that? And you mentioned that winning is a habit. And you also shared about how small wins add up and they create that momentum. And then you can kind of glide on that momentum. And it's like a riptide. You're swimming with the riptide. You know, you work out in a, in a, in a fitness pool and instead of being in the fitness pool, you're in a riptide. And that's 
you know, kind of like what that momentum can do is like you're putting in the same work and the same amount of physical exertion, but you're getting way further. Winning is a habit. I just want to say thank you because I'm learning how to do that in my life over the last, you know, nine months. And uh, it's definitely been something that I'm more consistent with at a, at a bigger level too, which is really exciting for me. So I just want to say thank you. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. Now we could, we could evolve on that. Winning is just, it's just what you do. Yeah. Yeah. This is a powerful question. What is your opinion on why many people revert? And you've seen it in your life, I'm sure. You're you're only, you know, mid forties, if that. What is your opinion on why many people revert to former levels of success or whatever plateaus instead of staying at the new level and then leapfrogging to the next one? How can someone prepare and stay at the new level in order to continue progressing? Oh, I've done, I've, dude, that's perfect for talking to me. Because I, you stop doing the things that got you where you were, right? So if I trained, I did all these other things and I got, you get to a certain level and then you start to cruise. And then when you start to cruise, you stop goal setting. When you stop, when you start to cruise, you, uh, you kind of relax and allowing the momentum to keep you going, not knowing that, that you start cruising, you're going backwards and then you start losing momentum. But it all comes back to a paradigm. So if you have a story, you tell yourself like, I only can make 10,000 a month or 5,000 a month. And then you'll have some months where you'll do better. And you're like, wow, I did great. But it's almost like a thermostat. You keep on going back to the old pattern. So it's, it's a paradigm. It's a belief. Like the reason why not all of us aren't making $100,000 on this uh, that are listening right now is because you just are unaware that you're capable of that. Because yeah, if, you cap- if you knew you were capable, you'd be doing it, right? And the reason why you don't make a million a month or 10 million a month because you just you're not aware that you're capable of. Well, and then you think, well, how am I going to do it? Because it's that, that's where the skills come from. So it's it's these uh, beliefs. They did this to you, period. And they meant well. It's it's a paradigm. It's a it's a survival mechanism because you got hurt. You put bad anchors to it. Yeah, but it's just our parents. What I'm saying, our parents, old school type of bringing up, or you know, people coming out of a depression era, like that just stuff just mm. sticks in there. And or the environment, or, yeah, or. Yeah, just the whole thing. It's just what I'm just saying. I'm using an example. It's just stories people tell themselves even on a, on a on a lower level, or maybe you saw your parents or friends or family go through tough times financially. You know, it, uh, and then what happens mm-hmm. is that things happen in your life, and you see things that are per- through a perception, and that that paradigm starts to look for evidence to support itself because it's all a story. So it's like you know, let's say you guys didn't get that sale. See, I told you. I told you, you know, like, or, or this and that. See, I, t- I, you know, so you're just looking to confirm the old you. So it goes, so you, it low, agreements. That thermos, yeah, that, exactly. That lowers, that lower, uh, that thermostat lowers back to where you were. So it just, mm. it's, 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 it, this is a tough one to get out of because the way you get out of it, it's conscious awareness that could almost be exhausting. For instance, I had to do it the other day. I said, per, here, here's my example I cannot find an associate to work for me that is consistent, reliable, and trustworthy. Because I'd be like over 13 or 15 years, I have not one, I have not had one that worked out well. And so it's easy for me to back that up. I'd be like, well, look, look over the last 15 years. Look, see, I got proof. And that's what you do. It defends itself. But when I could sit back and I, I, I see it as a truth, then I look at it, I'm like, well, are there other offices that have associates? Well, yes. Are they successful? Yes. Do they have multiple offices where 30 associates are running those clinics and they're doing amazingly well? Well, yes. So my belief is false. Yes, it's false. So it's like, you see what I mean? You see that exercise yeah. you got to go through? Mm-hmm. So yeah. you got to totally. like consciously tell your story, no, that is bullshit. And that's not the truth. And because of that, that that is that what you believe is what you're getting. So every time I would hire yeah. someone, I would self sabotage it to prove that I was right, but I wasn't. So is that, that just the ego? No, man. It's it's because I've is it self preservation. It's self preservation because I've been hurt. I was about to say hurt. That was so good, man. You're so good with that. Like because I felt I was saying I got hurt so many times. So just like a, a hurt animal, it's self preservation to back up. See, see. You know, there's just no good associates, you know, but it doesn't make sense, yeah. logic, but when you really look at it, but yeah, I think it's, it's a, it's a, it's self-preservation, man, for sure. Something else we talked about before was you will do fine long-term or knowing you're going to succeed at something or at what you're putting your intention towards. And in the meantime, where maybe you're sacrificing certain luxuries and certain, certain areas so that you can have more abundance in 
a healthier diet right now. Or for me, like I said, I downsize pretty much everything, spend very little money, and I'm really pouring into investing in myself and my future. And what I'm noticing though in that midst is I have to be careful of what I agree with, just like you just said, where you're in your daily life, you're like, okay, I'm driving this car right now. Nothing wrong with it. Grateful to have grateful to have uh, transportation that I own, you know, so grateful for that. And also realizing, you know, this is, you know, it's a piece of junk. <laughs> it's not something I'm going to like, uh, what's the word, evaporate into. I'm not going to become this. I'm not going to settle for this in my life. And that's just a very materialistic example, but it's very true. Even the neighborhood you live in, it's like, oh, the, oh, they got this new thing. And it's like, is that actually really that nice? Because if you move over to a neighborhood in whatever, the Sugar Land, and then it's like that neighbor got something twice as nice in that setting is actually the same response. You know what I'm saying? So you're having that same reaction or response to stimuli around you, your environment that and it's just because the people were around and, oh, well, did you hear Joe, Jim, Bob got a, a promotion? Oh, really? Great. What's he doing now? It's like, oh, that's so good. Maybe I'll do that. And so, again, it's like the environment matters, assessing what's what's around you. And the, agree- the agreements, the agreements is something I'm really, I, I call myself complaining recently. And I was like, what? I was like, no, I don't agree to this. I don't agree that that's my life. I don't agree that I'm going to complain about this. I'm grateful for so much. And this is not worth complaining about. I'm not going to put any energy towards it. Those agreements, I would challenge the listeners be very cautious of what you're telling yourself, what you're agreeing with. You know, if you hit traffic, even on the way home from work, if you work full time, oh, here we go again every Thursday. Don't agree to that. Don't agree to that. Like, find ways around it. Maybe hit the gym instead of hitting the, the the highway that time of day. Like, there's other things we can do to be proactive instead of just agreeing with things that are not going well. Now, someone might be listening and be cynical, say, "Oh, well, ha- I wasn't planning for my son to get cancer or for my parents to get ill." That's different. So, take it with a grain of salt. But I'm very passionate about that as well. So, those agreements are very powerful. But listen, and even even uh, yeah, but I'll 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 cover for you on this one. Yeah, even if your kid does get cancer, it it really it's horrible. It sucks, you know, and it's just something in life. But I'll tell you right now, in, unless you unless you could see the the good and the benefit on how that how that son's a teacher for you, because number one, all I know is anybody who has a child with cancer, they are more present and they appreciate time with that child more than any one of the parents that are listening that has their kids that weren't sick. So, so there is something that comes out of it. It's not, yeah, well, or at least it's, there's something that comes out of that circumstance. I always use a friend of mine, you know, his dad was not there for them. He was abusive, just a, not a very good father figure in his life. And, uh, but you know what? He's an amazing husband. He's an amazing father. And he, for years, keeping hatred and resentment against his father. But I said, I'm like, listen, you know, you're an amazing dad. You're an amazing husband. You know, you don't drink. You don't know these things. Why? He's like, well, my dad did all that. So I'm like, so even though he wasn't there in your life, can you see how he was one of your greatest teachers? Blaming he, him for everything. Yes. And he saw, no, he was. And he goes, he was one of my, he goes, he was my greatest teacher. You know, and he goes, he did, and he did the best he could, supposedly. He just, oh, what all he knew, but he goes, but but look how you turned out to be. So would you, now can you see how he was the greatest teacher, one of your greatest teachers? And that's that led, that led to forgiveness, man. And that led to wow. a tremendous amount of forgiveness. So yes, I know it's your child having sickness. It's unfair. It shouldn't be that way. I don't get it. But there's something dramatically according to your purpose that comes out of it that becomes good. Like every second you're just holding on, you're staring at that child, you're, 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 you're encompassing, you're listening to every word they say, where I could challenge many parents on the line here. How many times you you basically talk to your kids and look at your Instagram at the same time, or you're on the couch, everybody has their computer, their iPads and their iPhones. So like that doesn't happen when your child gets sick or, you know, there there's, there's a shortened life. Like, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, I don't want to say good or bad here, but there's, they're just things change. Va- values change. Um, perceptions change with that. Certainly, you know. So another question for you, many, uh, quite a few of my friends who are listening are, you know, they're dealing with initial levels of success. They're scaling their businesses. They're actually expanding to new states. They're expanding their portfolios. They also have a young family. So what would you say to someone who's learning how to manage those new levels of success, but also with a young growing family? 
I uh, you you must do it all because I will tell you right now, all of you, all of you guys, this man the guy I could tell I because I'm a guy, I'll just tell you. Let me tell you something. When you start to say, Well, I'm gonna kind of scale back and you know, I'm gonna be there, you know, like you're gonna be at the kids' soccer game thinking about your business. You're gonna be on date night thinking about your business anyway. So you're gonna st- and then you're gonna start to resent your wife and your family. Because you are not doing your business, which actually gives you the most amount of joy. And I know this sounds so messed up and it kind of challenges work life. When you're pursuing a goal or when you're trying to be the best in the world at something, that's when you're happy. And you're, that's when you're happiest. So when you're achieving your goal, when you're expanding, that's when mm-hmm. you're your happiest, period. But isn't, isn't love and, and family and all that about sacrifice anyway? You're so right, man, but let's talk about the emotion of it. And this is what I'm getting to. So if you know that achieving the goal gives you the rush, gives you the excitement. And so if I told someone like that who's who loves expanding, that loves the business, be like, listen, love is really like the most important thing, but they don't feel necessary that way, then it's very logically they know it. So what I try to tell people to do is you bring your family with you, meaning, so hey, honey. Hey, listen, I'm going to go to Chicago and speak or open up an office or expand here. Let's let's go. Let's bring the whole family. So I bring so you got to bring your family along with you because because uh, at least you're doing because I was never my happiest. Uh, I was always my happiest when I was trying to be the best in the world at something. And I was able to supply and bring my family to multiple places and they had multiple experiences they, they normally wouldn't have. If, if, if I was to sit back and be the daddy who plays catch with his son and wants to be there and checks out of work, they never would have had the experiences that they would have if I wasn't pursuing to be the best in the world at something. So you could actually have both. That's, that's one thing I teach. You could have a both. There's, you bring the family with you. As much as you can, you know, you, you include them, they're part of the mission with you, right? bring them right. with you. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, you mentioned that in the last interview, which was uh, family's part of the mission. They're yeah. on the mission with you. They're on the mission with you, man. It's, it's so, because I, I felt it and I didn't realize this until recently, like any resentments I had wasn't at my family. It was me trying to fool myself and try, you know what I mean? It was, it was, I was trying to, I had a weird perception or paradigm. I was trying to fool myself thinking that, you know, I was happiest when I was trying to pursue a goal, holding myself back from pursuing certain goals, which was my fault. You know, I realized, well, you could do both because when I didn't, I would resent it or I would find myself yearning to be somewhere else than with the family because now I'm losing momentum. Now the practice is going backwards. And so it's all these things. I'm like, wow, I could do both. And when you could do it both, you could definitely have the best of both worlds for sure. I love that. I can think of some friends of mine who are good examples of that. So keep up the good work, guys. Yeah. Let's jump into the heart healthy hustle round. So for the first category, we have heart. Chris, what is your favorite activity for strengthening your character? Personal study every day. I study. Quiet my mind. I read something. You know, I read something that's beneficial to develop my skills or making me better or making me more aware, right? Making me more self-aware. Self-awareness is tremendous and conscious awareness because then you realize, wow, I'm believing, I'm believing a lie. <laughs> so, so it's really good to oh, – but here's the thing. You forget you were believing a lie until you realize you were believing a lie again. So like I told you, like you, know, you, wanna, you want something that's always reminding you what true north is on a daily basis. Health. How do you maintain your physical health and balance while living a fast-paced life? You're traveling often? Because your health is absolutely the crucial foundation to be the best closer, to be the best speaker, to be the to feel the best, to function the best. Like like food, food itself. Let's just look at food. You eat crappy, every single area of your life is gone. You're gonna be depressed, you're gonna be funky, you're gonna have low self-confidence. Like I really I and I think that's what I did. I mapped out, I future faced. If I ate a bunch of crap all the time, how I feel, I, I future paced it to, I, I saw that it affected every single area of my life, even down to love and relationships. Because you feel bad, you know, you feel bad about yourself, you bring that to work. So when I was able to future pace that, I realized that if I'm not eating correctly and if I'm not training the way I'm supposed to, even coming off a plane, like The Rock, I look at The Rock, everybody knows The Rock, you always see the cool things. It's two in the morning, he's doing legs. Why? He came off a plane, he gets it in there because A, He's a winner. <laughs> That's just what he does. But he knows, like I, I'm. He made the agreement that he will exercise and eat correctly according to a schedule every day, no matter what the travel is, because that allows him to keep his focused and a game going at all times. Food and ex- food, especially, is so important. 
I mean, I found myself depressed in a funk, off, blowing sails, being a horrible speaker. I mean, food has sabotaged me so many painful times that you you realize like something like you said, health itself is really is really the foundation to everything good you'll get in your life. Down down to your love, down to the love of your life, down to an amazing relationship. That's why food and exercise is so important. You had recently post, published a video and you were saying when it comes to your health, you can have anything you want. Yep. My question is, uh, on a side note of the health, is what does it look like for somebody who's out there who's like, oh, I care about my health. That's why I'm doing the keto diet or I'm, I'm a, a plant, I'm a, a vegetarian or they're going about it in a fad type of way. It, it may be not be sustainable long term. So what's your advice to that person to transform their mindset around the scarcity and the fear base around food so where they can actually embrace food and say, hey, I can have that, but I don't want it. No, you nailed it. It's it's. I have to whatever way I choose to eat or exercise. I need to tell myself, can I do this for the rest of my life? So a keto, like when you tell keto, it's like, yes, does it work? Great, yeah, yeah, it works. But I sure as hell can do that the rest of my life. So why would I start something that I would not do the rest of my life? Or vegan, you know? Okay, great, but I'm going to want some, you know, meat later on. So it's like me personally, I love my meat, I love my carbs, I love my protein, I love my fats. And I like my vacation meals once yeah. a week. So I pick something that I could do the rest of my life. That's it. Your results you mentioned are according to what you choose. So yes. your direction is going to therefore, like you can choose it, but it's going to also yield that consequence, whether good or bad. Consequences, man. Yeah, eat the pizza. But if my goal is reaching a certain weight or body ah, fat. I just had right? some last right? week. Yeah, yeah. right. You know, if you, but no, no, like I'll have it my once, whatever. I have my vacation meal or delay gratification, but I realize like right, right. I could have it like right now. Like if you ask me, well, when are you in the mood for pizza? I'm like 24 seven. I could eat it all the time for sure. And that and chocolate chip cookies. But if I have goals, right. And it's just not fitness goals I have. It's like, wow, if I have that, I'm going to be slightly in a fog tomorrow. And I got a big, big target. So it's like I, yeah. I, I choose yeah. not to because I, I'm empowered. I want to, ha- I want to be empowered, and I want my goals to be achieved. I don't want this to own me and sabotage that. For anyone listening who needs a boost, like w- something that helped me immensely in this is to look at yourself like a Ferrari, and you can't put crap into a Ferrari; it's not going to run, or it's not going to run effectively. So you, your your body's worth how much more than a Ferrari? It's priceless. So you have to put things in there that are really good. I was interviewing Joe DeSena, the founder of Spartan, Chris. Yeah. You know what he said? It was a great word picture. He said he cleaned pools. He had a pool cleaning business in New York. And he he, he said the pools have filters. So picture if you were throwing in burgers, crappy junk food into the pool, it's going to create this disgusting green water very quickly. And, and, and the pool has filters. What do you think that's going to therefore do to your body if a big swimming pool gets polluted so quickly by just some few pieces of junk food? Because we have filters, we have pumps, you know? No, I think he nailed it on the head. And what he did right there was just similar how I got to a point. Every single person, when it comes to a goal you have, you need to have some type of story to convince yourself or make it very clear on emotional, like, like where it clicks. You're like, oh, yeah, like to him, it was the pool. Uh, for you, it's the Ferrari. For me, it's the wow. You know, I'm I'm not gonna I, I'm not gonna I was in a fog speaking the next day, and that's be, I was talking to people about changing their lives, and because of that, a few people, uh, if I didn't connect with them well, they went on living the same destructive recipe, and that was my fault because I ate some. You see what I mean? Like I take it to a pain point where there's something like everybody could do that. It's an exercise you could do to get to a point where you get it on a deeper level, not just logically, but in emo- you got to get it on an emotional level. Hustle, what is your main motivation for consistently working hard and smart? What's your why? My my why is I'm here on this planet to help people take their authority back and live life on their terms. And I, like I said, I was never happier than waking up every morning trying to be the best in the world at something. I try to be the best in the world at what I do because that's exciting to me. Share your three most influential health books and why. I really don't read many health books, to tell you the truth. <laughs> Let me just tell you what I have, what I'm reading now. So I'm reading Dave Asprey, that superhuman book. That's that's pretty good. That's uh, pretty good. Like this little biohacking thing that's going on there. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
Um, I read a book on uh, on fasting, which is really good. Just because I, I'm just intrigued why people fast, because that's kind of a fatty thing now. What's this other book here? I'm looking at here. Oh, and then uh, you know, just you know, the 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 gaps diet, which was you know how your your gut your gut controls your psychology, man. You know, it's a it's like just how we eat. That gut flora, that whole gut system of yours, will change the way you freaking think. And so, like, see, yeah. I like that. See, it goes back to like, I, I for me, it's all mindset, um, different perspective. Because I know that's the only thing that's going to change. Like, I'll eat a certain way once I could change the story I have towards food. Right? You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna perform a certain way once I change the story on, on, on how successful I could be. So everything's looking. I'm, everything I'm doing is trying to, uh, oh, clear it. Yeah. You know? I have a story then. This is something I invite your input to. I am in a place where I'm jeopardizing some of my own personal values that I live by. So for example, I'll give you an example. The gym I go to can't stand. I mean, it works for me, but I can't stand it. The only reason that I'm going to it is because the one I want to go to, which is a lifetime fitness, the um, just the cost difference, just I feel like my comfortability, I'm willing to go super low right now. What's your input into that? Like, let's translate that into yeah, yeah. Uh, every every area of life. Let's say, except for food, I don't really jeopardize much of anything on food. Uh, the gym, again, it has hammer strength. It's got great equipment. It has what I need. It's just the environment. Just I don't vibe with it. I don't like it. So it what's the environment? What's the environment, dude? Uh, it, it's just like a. It, it's it's like lower middle class, which is I nothing wrong with that. I guess, but yeah. the attitudes. <laughs> what happens is when you're around that environment. The, um, it, you know, it, it, it's just a lot of ego. Uh, like I, I can't even work out with a hat on looking at the floor without someone running into me and basically trying to interrupt my workout in a rude way. I, I, part of that is, you know, the way I'm perceiving it, but th- it's genuinely there. I've asked people and I've learned from other people going there that it's not just me. So it, it just makes me uncomfortable. Oh, I agree, man. I, I, I got the same situation. There's two gyms I work at. One is just you know, it's 10, they're one's 10 bucks a month. Right. So I go to that one and, but they have a ton of good equipment, right? They, so they have the right, good equipment. It's right. so like today I did legs. I'm like, well, this is the place I got to go to. I don't like it. And it's kind of comical, man. You got people in there. Yeah. Like, Dude. Like, but then I realized at the same time, that <laughs> that's all you gotta understand, man. That's you gotta understand. Look at this. That's all they got. Like that's all that is that is the highlight of their day. That's all they got. That's that's where they base their confidence from. That's like so you realize it's like you got a lot going for you. And then when you go in there, so you know, just that's but that's their that's their stage, man. That's that's the best they got. And that's why like I wouldn't trade places with it. But I mean, people would it be screaming, where they'd be, you know, flexing in the mirror, just doing weird stuff. And I'm sitting there going, I'm a professional. Like I don't, I mean, like I'm the least um uh vain and showy in that gym because I'm there just to work, right? So I got my music on yeah. my hat down. And you know what I do, man? If I'm gonna go towards that machine and that person kicked my back to the side, kicked my water to the side, like I was it was clearly using it. And you know what I do? I just keep on walking past and I just find something else to do. Like I don't get angry. I'm like, you know what? Like it's just not worth my anger and energy. Like, cause when we go to the gym, man, that's our time. And this is so many times, like people are like, Hey, how many more sets you got? I'm like, and I'll literally do this. Oh man, you could have it. And then I just walk, I walk <laughs> away because it's like, I don't want to like, I just want to enjoy. And you know, it, it makes me change up my workout sometimes. But the one thing I, I refuse to do is just like you said, let it get to me because this place does like that place. It has the good equipment. That's where I need to go. That's, that's what I want. But and then it's kind of comical, man. I see it's like a, it's kind of a jungle a little bit sometimes for me, but uh, I just sit back there and, you know, I'm not one that I, I don't let anger, anger doesn't really motivate me. I'm not that, that's not how I work. I have to look at it and be like, Hey, listen, this is all they got. They're outside with their fast car, like, you know, revving their engines. And I'm like, I got a Lamborghini at home. <laughs> it's like, you know what I mean? It's like, they just, this is, you got to see that that is, that is what they got, man. That, like in their life is, it's really like that. Let them, let them enjoy their, their moment. You know, that's been my approach and it's been, uh, it's my point in asking the question is, yeah, I guess you got to do what you got to do, right? You know, it's like how much of the environment protection thing is actually going to be, uh, uh, to your benefit. Cause it's good to face resistance. It's good to stay, uh, sharp. It's good to have to deal with different things. Tolerance, uh, bro. How about, that just yeah, taught, yeah. that taught you. To, so, what's the good thing? It teaches you tolerance. So instead of getting yeah. pissed off, be like, "Hey, man, you know, hey, I'm, so, you know, you just introduce yourself and just like go the opposite of what you do. You know, it That's sucks, right? 
But I'm telling you, it's it's teaching you tolerance. It's like so the the most annoying person in the gym. That's the one I want to say hello to. I want to get to know their name, and then yep, you know, yep. the, it's 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 a it's an exercise, man. It's an exercise of your heart, not just your muscle. Yeah. I literally have done that with just about every single person I just mentioned to you. Like, I, I mean, I walk in the gym now. I'm like, hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? You know, because just want to be in there to do the work and. And and some I was talking to uh, another guest, and he said this with celebrity people, with celebrities is a lot of people who are big fans will come up and just stand to the side and stare at them. And what the fan doesn't realize is that it's very creepy and weird because the, the the celebrity probably assumes you want a picture, but they don't know what you want. So human nature is like, what does this person want? And that happens a lot at the gym. I'm not saying that I'm a celebrity at all. What I'm saying is when you're in the gym or you're in, a, in an area where uh, uh, people have a strong proclivity to compare, it becomes an environment strongly influenced by emotion and and primal tendencies, in my opinion. So it's something that is is good to uh, you know exercise your mind and your self control as well. That's that's a good point. Well, the greatest way to diffuse it because you know when I was growing up, I was always working out. So when I used to go to the clubs and stuff like that, you'd have guys sizing up guys all the time. And the number one way to diffuse the situation is to go up and be like, "Hey, man, hey, what's I go? Hey, hey, what's going on, man? Hey, you look great." And I would see that person deflate in front of me, like their chest, like they would actually kind of become comfortable again. I'm like, hey, you know, like, so I realized that was the best, best way to diffuse the environment is by going up, uh, you know, you know, because they, you, they don't know, they like, they, they act all tough and stuff. And that's the greatest way I was able to diffuse, just diffuse it ahead of time, go in there, be like, oh, I got to diffuse a couple volatile, yeah, yeah. volatile <laughs> bombs in here. Cause I don't know if I'm going to be talking to their girlfriend. Is that, time. is that? Right, exact, or their wife by accident, yeah, yeah, and yeah, you didn't, yeah. you didn't, you didn't walk up to her. She had a question for you. It's you, not man. your problem, know. you know. So is that is that does that work for uh, business circles as well? Always, always. Like if you if there's a if there's a peacocking party going on, like peacocks. That's yeah. when you go to masterminds. Everybody's peacocking. That's the best, greatest way because like they're they're trying to. Sh- show their importance or validity but if you could just that's the greatest way is you introduce yourself you meet them you show you're a good humble dude or gal and it diffuses it immediately like like all i could tell is like i'm just going back to the club days and when i i did like you see people like i would see guys who would be flaring their lats they would literally uh, they would actually <laughs> they would uh what do you call it? they would deflate in front of me because they realized i wasn't a threat I wasn't a threat at all, man. I'm a really good dude. I, I wish I vote for your yeah, victory. Yeah. You know, I, I, you know, we're yeah. we're, we're brothers. We're brothers. You know, and that's. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna start saying that yeah. to you. I vote for your victory. Yeah, I vote for your victory, man. Because I do, and I really do. Like even like when like I always vote for your victory. Like if for everybody that's listening, you know, we talked about getting on the show again. I'm like, send me your calendar, and he sent it to me yesterday, and I booked for today. Why? Because it's like, dude, I want to do this. Let's do it. You know, like not let's. I don't want to do it next year. It's like I want to do it as quick as possible because I'm excited about it. If you had 60 seconds to sit down next to your 28 year old self, put your hand on his own shoulder and speak to him, you know, what would you say to him in in that year of 28? I would say I appreciate you and everything you're about to go through. I'm not going to tell you the answer because you have to go through it because when you go through it, yeah. it'll wind up being the greatest bust in your life. Because if you knew what you're about to go through between now and the age I am now, uh, you would hide under a, you would hide under a rock somewhere. So <laughs> just understand, thank you for being faithful. Thank you for being courageous. Understand that everything that happened to you is going to be one of the greatest gifts you ever had in your life. And you know, I'm going to go find my 60-year-old self. <laughs> Cause I, I need a pep talk for yeah. that person. Yeah, so, so, uh, yeah, that's it, man. I, I, it's the time machine question. It's like, I wouldn't go back in time because we just don't know the, the time of events. I would have, I would have invested in Bitcoin definitely when this guy said, just, give me <laughs> grand. and, uh, but you see, but you, I would have done that. I would have invested in Apple and Amazon, but it's like, that's, you know, it's, but maybe not, you know, maybe what happened if you, if I had a, a hundred million dollars, you think it would be great, but maybe I, I don't know, maybe I, something wrong, bad would happen. If you had your 60-year-old self and he was walking up to you and saw you right now, what would he say? I would ask him, I'm like, is it going to get easier? It's going to get easier. Am I going to have, uh, am, you know, am I going to be able to live, uh, live a legacy that I want? Where's this going? And, I'll, and I'm sure a lot of wisdom would come out of his mouth. Would what get easier? 
Oh, just like, you know, just everybody's life, you know, is, is life going to just get easier? Like, is this, is this hustle going to let up, you know, what's like, what's going to be important then, you know, any tips? And, and I'm sure he's just going to look at me and say the same thing. Hey, guess what? You know, you got to go through it. You got to go through it. It's developing you. We're spiritual beings in a, in a human body. We are not our bodies. Once you realize that this is just the suits we got. So we're always going to be striving for goals. If you're not, if you're not reaching for some type of goal, you, this is where depression and conformity and just lackluster come from. And this is, and then no one likes being there either. So it's like, always have that goal in front of you and uh, it'll keep you moving forward. What's your number one takeaway from 2019? Anything could be amicable, amicable if you choose to make it that way. Meaning, end a chapter of your life or, st- or move on a chapter of life. It doesn't have to be destructive. Bombs do not have to go off. Like the whole burning bridges and exploding and breaking the bu- – like there, no, it could be amicable. But you're gonna, it's going to take a lot of work on your end as well because those friends that are no longer your friends, those people that are no longer your business partners, it could – you got to be the bigger person to, to make sure you keep the things amicable and, and good as much as possible to maintain that friendship. And that means that you're going to have to take the, the high road and the short end of the stick. Compromise. You're going to have to compromise for knowing that, hey, listen, at the end of the day, if it could keep some type of relationship and friendship, then I'm willing to, I'm willing to, but you know, I'm going to keep these things amicable. And if that means that you win, if you think you win now to keep it amicable, then then fine. But as long as we still have some type of uh, common courtesy towards each other, then that's good. Yeah, that's a bigger win in the long run, anyway. Well, it's right? tough, dude. It's tough because you'll have all of your friends telling you they're 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 if, if business partners, they're screwing you, or relationship, you know, whatever it may be, and you're gonna have everybody telling you that you need to fight. But you do like you just gotta tell yourself, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna end things good. I don't want anybody, I don't want anybody on the planet to not like me. Meaning, I I think every everybody sh- that I had a relationship with should at least be friendly with me or courteous with me. Knowing yeah. that we we left on disagreements, but we at least have a, a common commonality of friendship. Because think about this: how many times that if you're business partners with someone, that means that you were really good friends with them. Or if you're in a relationship, here's relationship advice: how can you really like, or even for some of you, love somebody, but at, at the same time, it it totally one eighties to where you hate each other? How can you go from like such respect and friendship and camaraderie to like despising? It's just hurt. It's hurtfulness, right? It's like you said before. It's a preservation. It's not. It's not reality. It's like, well, I was your friend for so long. How can this like be one eighty where we hate each other? It's because it, there's hurt involved. So if you if you definitely say, listen, my priority is that, you know, it's going to sting, but I'm going to make sure that I, I I clear the hurt through this entire process. Then that's that's what I'll do. I mean, think about yeah, it. think of how many relationships you don't have anymore. It's like, wow, you know, whether it be a friend, whether it be a business partner, whether it be even a relationship, you're like, wow, like we really liked each other to to a abnormal degree. And how how is that person like uh, you know an enemy or or a antagonist of me now? It doesn't make it that doesn't make sense. So that's one of my thing for 2019. I thought that no matter what, even patience, man, like just think I see thousands of patients. If a patient leaves, they leave on good terms with me. And like I said, that's right. I said, listen, I support whatever you want to do. You know, I want to, I would, cause I want to be with them for the rest of their lives. But I'm like, Hey, listen, whatever you choose, I support you fully. I may not like it, but uh, you know, I, I do support you. I'm here for you no matter what, no matter what. Hmm. Yeah, that's a great point. What's a 2019 goal that you're going to achieve by 2020 that you haven't completed yet? 10 million a year. 10 million? Yep. What do you, what what is your overlying or underlying goal with that level of income to finally reach DECA in one year or is it to then go to 20 and beyond and oh, why? Very good. Uh, a thir- it's it it shuts it changes the thermostat. Finally, you know, finally, right? So now, you know, you you tasted it. So once you taste it, then it's doable. It becomes common ground again. And there's, uh, you know, and and there's there's some personal drives I want to do and and uh, accomplish. But I mean, like that that's really the thing there. I want to just change the thermostat, and then with that thermostat change, I could contribute more. I could have more financial confidence to do things. I could have more experiences, more collaborations, more contributions, more experiences, and it creates greater potential. And it's speed. It creates speed because now you know you could hire the best. You could hire a CEO. You could do some 
like Dean Graciosi says, you know, you could write a check for a lot of stuff. So like, I love that. I constantly like, you know, writing a check, a lot of things go away or make things better. And he's right. And that allows, uh, that allows us to do that. Very nice. What are some recommendations you have to think bigger and, in, and up-level our thermostats? Constant study. Like every day you need to be reading something or watching YouTube. And what I mean by YouTube, find someone that you really gel with and then become a student of them. And those people will change. So for instance, right now, Bob Proctor, I'm kind of like a student of him now. I'll tell you why. He's 86 years old. That guy is sharp as a tack. He loves what he does. And I'm like, man, this guy's living the health. He's <laughs> living the he's living yeah. the hard, healthy hustle right there. It's like this guy is focused. And I'm like, wow, I can't wait. That's that's double my age. I'm like, so then extends this, it 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 blows time away in my mind. It's like, wow, I I, I gotta live as long as I, as long as I lived, I gotta live that again. And I'm I'm I can't wait till I'm his age on stage changing people's lives. So what I do is I find someone that I'm reson- resonating with currently or whatever I'm going through. And then I become a student. I buy all the books, I make an entire YouTube playlist that's 60 hours long and that becomes i become a student and i i i totally immerse myself in that you don't have to go to these seminars you could just youtube's amazing man you get it right there and then you immerse in, you immerse yourself in it to the point where you start to think like they think right because you 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 mirror that and you start to see that you start to know what they're saying and kind of get in their head and you become a student. I was, I've was i been a student of Gary Vaynerchuk and Grant Cardone. And uh, Belfort's actually coming next because now I'm getting more into like the sales thing, that he, that straight line sales thing he's doing. So I yeah. just get all their books. and uh, But then I had times where I, I've been a Wayne Dyer guy where it's like instead of the hustle, I went into peaceful um, calming. Like it's weird. It's like, wow, that's so opposite of me. But it's just at certain times of your life, different things and different people resonate with you. And I just tell you, find that person, go all in get their YouTube stuff, get their books and become a student for three, four, five months. And guess what's going to happen? You'll start to phase out and then someone else will be there. But I'm telling you, man, become a student in that person and mentors are all over the place. I have access to the best mentors in the world. Most of them are dead. So if so, if if Benjamin Franklin is your mentor, then study all his stuff. Like, right. Doesn't he have that one, uh, find someone that resonate, you resonate with and become a student of them, whatever it is. And just uh, just go all in on that one person or find the one book you like and read it over and read it over and over again for a couple months. You know, like the Think and Grow Rich, Bob Proctor was saying he read it for 56 years straight, 56 years. So I'm like, wow, I read it like three times. <laughs> so, so it's like, so it proves that it, or even the Bible, you guys just like, you know, it might someone be like, yeah, I read it once. It's like, well, you know, each time you read something, you're going to, it's going to be living and active. You see it differently because you're, you're a different person reading it. Each time you read it, you change. So you're a different person reading something. So instead of saying you read 70 books a year, I'd rather you say, Hey, I read one book 70 times and really wow, interesting. Oh my God. Because then you would master the material. Yeah. Really interesting. That's really what I wanted to hear your opinion on. So you would actually read one book 70 times versus 70 books. That's my goal, man. For sure. Like, uh, you know, for you, if you wrote a book right now, it would be yeah. everything you learned over your entire life. Just think you would pour your entire life into this book. I would be disrespectful to read it once or skim over one or God forbid, listen to the audio book on two, <laughs> on two times the speed to get right, through right. and say, I read your book. You'd be like, no, that was my entire life. You didn't read my book. You, you, you Clearly, you couldn't get the essence of my entire existence and what I learned and what I went through. It was just, you know, you just skimmed over it versus saying, listen, you know, this is this is the, per- you know, I'm going to read this over and over. But we're always thinking maybe there's a better book or maybe I'll get something better. And it could be. But I really think, you know, and maybe that's just me at 40. It's like, OK, here's these books that I know I'll definitely go back to. And maybe I'm just going to be a student of this book for the next four months and maybe give it two or three uh, times. You know, that one guy, Hermosi, he has this thing like uh, on, he's, he helps gym owners like crush it. And, uh, oh, you're talking about Bedros Koulian? No, okay, so he's a friend of Bedros. Like those guys, those guys will read a book. They read the book first, they, and they'll do it. They'll skim through it, this audio book. Then they go through it again and a third time. So I got to listen to those guys. Why do they do that? Because clearly, like I guess the first time is they kind of get the essence of it. The second time they they're prepared and they're really focusing on certain things. And the third time is now when it's application time. Yeah, Beatrice is a stud. That guy's his book is great too. Man up. 
Like that would be a disservice to him to read his book. This guy, he was an immigrant. They were actually going to uh, garbage dumps to get food. Out of like his dad would drive, like so. How disrespectful for me to tell him, "Hey, yeah, yeah, I read your book." And he and once it's like he's like, "That's yeah. my entire life." He doesn't. He probably wouldn't see. It. He'd be happy to have your book. But like when you realize, it's like I poured my whole entire <laughs> life into a book. Mm-hmm. All the experiences of eating out of trash things, and you you listen to the audio. Like you know, there's so much wisdom, gratefulness. How about just that part? Like wow. You know, if I read like I, every part, I would be so grateful that I didn't have to go through that. Or even uh, Tim Grover, he said, like, I don't know if you heard this one. His dad, like, they were in a cab, and his dad just said, "Stop right here," and they walked out with the other luggage because his that was as far as they could, they had money for the cab ride, and they literally had to drag their suitcases for the the next distance. It's like, wow, <laughs> jeez, I never had to yeah. do that. So even like. Even having to read that story 10 times a year, the amount of gratefulness you would have and perception change you would have and be like, wow, you know, we might, we might, we might be like, ah, that guy has a $200 million a year uh, business. But you, but then you look at it and you become grateful saying, you know what, if eating out of trash cans was part of his story to get there, I'm really, I, I'm okay with where I'm at right now. You find what I'm saying? Like it just gives you a level of br- gratefulness and a, really appreciation uh, over their life. And, and that's just my reason for reading books. Uh, find a good one, read it over and over again, and you'll just get deeper and deeper. What is it? A mile deep and an inch wide versus a mile wide yeah. and an inch deep. Yeah. I mean, how many people, you know, read 30 books last year and they're in the same place? Cause there's just, they're, they're information collectors. They're, they're, uh, they're spectators. They're spectators, you know, and then you got to be patient because I'm impatient. I'm like, oh, I want to get through this so I could do this book and this yeah. book, but it's like, listen, Hey man, you're going to be here for another 50 years. Take your time. You know, just you like this, just be be a be a study of that. Be a student of that. One of the main things I do with this show as you know is focus on investing in yourself in all areas. One of the things that I did in uh, this year was I went to work full-time for a software company to get my finances back in order just because of my finances not being where they need to be. And it was one route that I decided to do based on advice from a financial mentor of mine who is actually a very risk tolerant entrepreneur and he's making a very good amount of money in uh, as an entrepreneur. I took his advice. I love it. I, I enjoy the company. The, I'm learning a ton. It was actually the right move for me because I'm learning about business stuff I had no idea about, company culture. I'm learning about the people that I'm actually working with as we serve people. And I love it. One of the things though, I'm noticing, uh, I'm wondering your insight here of how to maybe regain some of my entrepreneurial motivation when it comes to this because other things that I've been agreeing to have been, you know what, I don't really want to be the number one guy. I don't really want to have the buck stop with me. I don't know if I would enjoy a lifestyle like that. And it's something that, you know, I'm okay with saying that, but also I'm realizing I I also want to have full financial independence. So, you know, it's an interesting dynamic happening, but it, it was the right move and I think it's still something I know it's something that I love. It's, uh, again, I tell myself, you're not working for money, you're working for opportunity that this is going to put you in and things like that. No, I agree. I would, um, you know, you always keep an unknown. You try to do something that opens up an unknown every month. So for someone, it might going to be going to a seminar, you know, you go to a seminar. So you just kind of get out of your environment because it's so easy. It's like every every morning, it's like, shut off the alarm, open the door. Like it's almost as like, wow, I've been here before. It's like Groundhog Day. So as long as there's Groundhog Day, even though you're enjoying it now, that's awesome. But it's always nice to have an unknown, a seminar you go to, get out of town. It just creates creativity again. So that, that's all you're asking. Like your ideas come from being creative. And when you're when you're on a, a very consistent routine, that's sometimes the issue with a routine. It takes away creativity a little bit. So, you know, I saw you went to like the School of Greatness and all that, that Lewis House thing, right? You went to that, it's like, like make sure you have a couple of those in every quarter because that opens up creativity. It introduces you to new t- new people. A lot of unknowns happen every time I go to a seminar. It's not the seminar. It's it's the person I met in the hallway. It's the something. Yeah. It's something that was really. But if I wouldn't have gone there, I, that opportunity wouldn't happen. So that's why I embrace the unknowns and and put yourself in those positions. I haven't. I really have cleared my calendar to kind of focus and buckle down a little bit as well. And it really took away the unknown. So I'm like, wow, I got to go to some seminars just to get around, just to create unknowns. Because it's never the seminar that I learn. It's something or someone I met that creates a 
tremendous opportunity that I never realized, nor nor would it have ever happened. That's a great point. And and it also helps you in, let's say you're working a day job, it helps you in that immensely. And that's an advantage that you can leverage. I de- I agree with that. I've I've gone to three this year. Which I went to it? one in Jan I went to one in January in New Jersey. Which one? Uh, I went to that one, I don't remember what it was called, Soul Care. It was a Christian spiritual one. So it was very oriented with my core beliefs. In it was late May into June. I went to Cole and Sonia Hatter's Thrive Make Money Matter event. They had like E.T. there, Ty Lopez, Dan Fleischman, all those guys. Oh, nice. And that that event was probably my favorite for the year. All tactical stuff. No one was selling from stage. It was powerful. And then I went to Lewis Howe's event this past uh, month in September, mm-hmm. which was also great. To, and, and like you said, it was about connecting with the people in the hallway. I actually was coming into my first year into those events. I was really... You know, I was still very insecure, like, oh, how am I going to do? I got to show up for my brand. And now I went back this year and kind of looked out for those people, but also looked for the VIPs and for everyone who was a person. So like, for example, there was a speaker who was being swarmed in a hallway. And, you know, I, I'm not going to lie to you. One of the speakers, like a couple of the speakers, I, it didn't resonate with me. Hope you do well, but I'm not going to wait for you in the hallway and be a groupie. So I looked at them and I looked at the people around and on the outskirts of the circle were guys from... Lewis's like hired photography outsourced team. And I talked to those guys. I was like, how are you guys doing? What are your names? And I said, like, I want to connect with the people here who are in the trenches because they're actually doing work. And I doubt, you know, everyone's swarming to the speaker, like, oh, hopefully I can get a picture and look cool and talk to them. Maybe they had a real question for them. They've read their book. And for me, I was like, I'm going to look at this and say, hey, like you're a photographer, like what's going on in your day. And and by doing that, it ended up that those two guys really appreciated that. And lo and behold, they're like, hey, we're actually filming some testimonials for this event. You want to go around the corner and, and shoot a testimonial? Oh, guess what else? I was wearing my podcast t-shirt. So it, I'm getting free publicity just because I was being genuine and intentional with human beings versus just trying so hard, you know? So that's an example of what those events can do if you're going with the right intention and with the right attitude. Another thing is they do foster creativity because um, it's, it's always new experiences, always new people, always someone else to learn from and also others to help. Like how can you serve people? Yeah, man, myself, I got to get some on the calendar too. get some on the calendar. Cause it's so easy when you get in your groove and your routine, you're like, I don't want the, the momentum. Like, Oh man, yeah. you know, it's, it's a weekend out here. And, you know, I, it's a, that's a hundred percent true. I got to say though, that, that September event did throw off my routine pretty, pretty big. It really did. So I will, I, I will say that it's okay. It threw me off. Oh, but, I understand. I understand, yeah. man. I, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's, but it's, it was good for you, man. I'm glad you, I glad you went. Before we go, just want to ask you what's getting you out of bed in the morning. What's getting you up and excited, uh, each day. What's getting you out of bed in the morning. Well, it's like we said, you know, it's the, it's the yearning to, to be the best in the world at something. And for me, it's just to help people get their authority back and live life on their terms. And that's, uh, you know, and, and there's a couple of things I have to prove to myself as well. And that's just, mm. and because yeah. of that, that, that gets me, you know, it gets me out of bed. <laughs> sometimes you want to do it for people, right? And a lot of times, you know, so it, it, it changes when you, when you can do it for yourself, then it's personal. And, uh, you know, you might, you know, you don't want to let yourself down. And I got some things to prove for myself and get back on track to uh, hit a certain level I want to. And there's just, there's so many, it's so layered, man. I, I, I have a whole, I have pages and pages of the whys behind it. And it's many whys. It's, I want to send my son to a certain school in Spain. You know, like, I mean, just so many different reasons why. But, you know, I, I could feel all that emotion. So when the alarm clock goes off, it's ready to rock and roll and uh, do it. But the, the goal it definitely is, I keep on saying, it's to be the best in the world at what I'm doing, for sure. Because at least I go for that, you know, it's exciting. You know, what if? Someone's got to do it. That's powerful. Chris, thank you so much for being a guest on the show and speaking to us. How can my audience connect with you after the show? I think the best ways you could do it, you can go on Instagram. So Instagram is really good. I got some cool stuff on there that'll be worth your time. It's Dr. Zaino, D-R-Z-A-I-N-O. And then if you go to IamHero.com, it's IamHero.com. I got a great free masterclass for you guys. And that's really good stuff right there. That's In fact, if I could do one thing only, it would be that stuff, all that content. I am here, contact. That's my favorite. And if you want to take it further, you know, all the all the way, all the 
ways you could do are right there for you as well. And I answer all my comments and DMs. So if you do comment, I'm the one who's yep. answering it. So be sure. That's just a value to me. I want to connect with you guys. And, and any way I could help you guys, just let me know. I'll be there for you. I mean, Chris, I know you mean that as well. You're, you're always engaging on social media. So thank you um, just for showing up and for doing what you do. You are appreciated and what you're doing is very significant. It's making a difference. What do you think? Did you have a good time? Oh, I always have a good time with you, man. I appreciate you so much. I, you know, I love what you're doing. And yeah, it's, it's just, again, remember you, you blessed me with this. So I'm, I'm very appreciative. Congratulations on making it to the end of this episode. What about this episode stood out to you? Next, I need your help sharing this show. I want this podcast to impact and reach 6,000 people per episode by August 31st, 2019. And I want us to reach 15,000 people per month by March 29th, 2020. Have you been enjoying multiple episodes of The Hard Healthy Hustle? I'm thrilled to share with you an exclusive invitation to join our new Facebook community. To get to know other Heart Healthy Hustlers, simply go to thehearthealthyhustle.com forward slash Facebook, where you can expect to see different members of our community being featured weekly in Facebook Live calls. I appreciate all of your love and support, and I will see you in the next episode. As always, be generous on every occasion. There is a story for you, and live wide open. Absolutely. So I'll cut the interview there. Awesome. Is there anything else that I can include in the show notes that you haven't mentioned in the sh- in the actual interview? No, the I am hero one's good. That's uh, that I'm hero.com. They just have to go to that and they'll get uh, access to the masterclass there. And uh, it's, it's really good. They'll enjoy that. And Instagram. That's it. Now it's funny. You said like Instagram, you know, all my stuff, I'm, I filmed all the content and I, and I loaded it up months in advance, if not over a year in advance. So the stuff you see now, that's probably, you know, six months ago, eight months ago stuff. But when that runs out, I start disappearing from Instagram. That's one of the things I'm, you know, I just to focus, you know, just like you said, just yeah. to focus and put that energy towards doing something substantial, you know, like, it, like you're right, man. Like when you said, you know, you see people and they're flossing, you know, it is, it, it does feel good. But sometimes flossing at the expense of expense isn't helping. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> You know, I, it's a lot of money for this camera guy. It's a lot of money for this. And just for what, you know, just, uh, you know, versus like, let me build something like that. I think you're in that phase now. I'm going to, I'm going to be quiet. Yep. You know, I'm going to build yep. something. I'm going to build something good and large and awesome. And then people will come to me to hear me speak. They'll, you know, then you'll watch, you know, you just do your thing and then you'll have people come to you say, hey, listen, can you share with this? Can you help me here? So, you know, I'm going to just be quiet and build something massive and then have, uh, you know, then, then have people come. Cause otherwise That's it's just, awesome. you know, it's, <laughs> it's like you, you just, your money's going out the door, you know, it's, it's, it, it gets eaten up and time and money. It really does and effort and creativity. But there's some people that I, God bless them. You know, they're great on YouTube. You know, I have a lot of chiropractic friends that are destroying it on YouTube because you hear people's necks cracking. And I never was a guy like, you know, I, I just, I'm a little bit private with that and with my patients, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, but Hey, they're doing, you know, to see them doing three, four grand a day off ad spend. I'm like, Oh, not like, you know, if like people click, click, it clicks the ads. I'm like, that's incredible. Like I just, but again, it's like, there's still, you look, when you look behind the scenes, there's so much work, but there's still a lot of work. So at the end of the day, no one, you're, you're going to work your butt. You're going to work hard no matter what you do. But like you said, if you enjoy it, then working hard isn't as grueling, you know, because it's, you enjoy it. So just, find that. Yeah. 